Um, listen, I was talking to Kim a few minutes ago, and um, I did tell her something I felt like would be a good video for everybody to know. And it was, <clears throat> um, well, I was going to talk about her situation, but uh, I'm not going to do that because I didn't ask her permission to do so, so I'm not going to do that. But what I can say is, over the years, your mind has has collected data. And what it has done is it's collected stuff to protect you. So let's say somebody has cheated on you. Well, there's a whole slew of data that your ego and your mind has collected that you take as warning signals that if you're with a new person, you're looking for those warning signals. And the second you see one of those warning signals, then you say to yourself, you say, Oh, well, they're, they're going to cheat on me. I need to start walking, watching for more signals. Well, what that does is it sends out a vibration to the universe that this person is cheating on you. And eventually, I guarantee you, that person will be cheating on you. It's just the way it works. Now, you've also done that with, let's say everybody knows that she's waiting on a check. You're, she's watching for the UPS truck. Uh, if it doesn't show up at a certain time, it's not going to be there that day. Okay, she, that's data that she's collected. So what you can do is instead of using that collected data over all this time, because you know you're a creator God, is start telling different stories. You don't have another decades to collect different data, but you have enough imagination to create different stories. And how I did is I started this in traffic. So, in other words, when somebody cut me off in front of me, instead of saying, well, they're just an inconsiderate a-hole, instead of saying that, I stopped and I went, you know what? They just got a phone call and their pet um, cat that they've had for 15 years just died and they are traumatized, but they still have to go to work today because they are a single parent with two kids and they can't afford to miss work. So they've got to go anyway through streaming, through through eyes that are streaming with tears. They're going to have to deal with that loss and go to work anyway. Now all of a sudden, instead of choosing they're an inconsiderate asshole, I, I chose a different storyline. Now I'm full of compassion and understanding. I back up. I'm not angry. I don't send out angry vibrations from to the other side and I'm not going to draw any more angry assholes towards my towards me or any other circumstances like that. Does that make sense? Now in the case of the UPS truck, what I told her, it's past 1030. However, you're a creator God and you can visualize whatever you want. So let's change the story. Instead of saying the UPS truck is always here by 1030, say my UPS truck was um, in, was, a, was there at an accident. And it's such a good UPS driver that he stopped and pulled over. And there was a mother and her child stuck in a car. And he helped get them out. And he had a piece of candy in his UPS truck. And he went and got the piece of candy and gave it to the little child. And the little child smiled and gave him a big hug. And that's the kind of UPS driver that I'm going to have come to my house. And in the back is my check that's full of the vibration of money, that bubbly, energetic, can't wait to get to you money. And it's sitting in the back in an envelope, just bubbling, bubbling, and bubbling, waiting to get to me. And now I can smile and visualize that bubbly check, just almost like a cartoon, trying to get through the door to get to me, to get to me. But it's being held back a little bit, but that's okay because the UPS driver stopped and helped some people. And that's the reason why it's two hours late. And now two hours later, my bubbly money is going to be in my hands with be delivered by the most awesome person who thought enough about somebody, a, a, a little child to give him a hug and ease the day after such a trauma. And now I'm happy to have a 30 second conversation, energetic exchange with, with such a wonderful person. Does that make sense? Now, I know the New Agers have done, they say, do vision boards and uh, write down what you want. And that is true. But a lot of times that's so far away, what we really want or what we think we really want is such a different picture than what we're living in right now that it makes it very, very hard to get from here to there. 
the way I tell you to do it is step by step, moment to moment. And one way of doing that is just living in this moment. How can this moment be a little bit happier? Okay, a little bit happier. Well, for me, if I was waiting for a check that was that important, it would make me a little bit happier to visualize how it could get here anyway. Let's say, also, you could get that done in five minutes. What if you just go into a meditative state and not worry about it all? And really, what's keeping it away is the worry. The check is there. It's available. It can be there in your hand if you take the worry away, if you allow it to come. Why? Because the universe has got bunches of way of getting things to do, to happen. You can change over to a di different timeline just instantaneously. So what if you went into a meditative state? What if you really believed it and went, no, that bubbly check with money trying to get to me is at my doorstep. I want it in five minutes. Literally five minutes later, somebody could knock on your door. You could open the door and it was accidentally delivered to them five minutes ago, two hours ago, a week ago, and they just got it to you. Does it really matter? And you can have the check in your hand. Anything is possible and can be allowed if you allow it. If it's not happening, guaranteed 100%, it's because of you. As I was telling her, when you're looking around and things aren't going right, or things are going not right at what you think is not right, the first question should never be, why is that person being mean to me? Or why is this not happening the way I want it? The first question should be, why am I creating it this way? Have I blocked it because of worrying? Have I overthought it in a demand for it to be done this particular way and therefore I'm slowing it down or causing it not to happen at all? Or am I supposed to be going another direction altogether and this is a block that I've done myself to get me to look the other way, to look at a different option? When you look at things always from the perspective of it's you doing it, always, it's not the world, it's not the other person, it's not the, the environment, it's all about you, then how can you change it to something else? Then when you see children uh, dying of starvation, the question is not, why are they starving the children? The question is, why am I with a collective where the children are starving? And how can I walk myself out of that? The question is not, why is my, uh, is my child dying of cancer? The question is, why am I on a timeline with a collective where my child is dying of cancer? That's the trick. Also, I wanted to, to go over another thing with you that even though I can tell you all of these things with these videos, this is from my perspective and these are hints. It's always been about, this is how I do it. Now you have to figure out how to do it your way and your way will be unique to you. I guarantee you, it will not be exactly like mine or anyone else's. It will be unique to you. We are creator gods. We do not do redundant. We do not do repetitive. Everything will be done a little bit differently. And for an example of this is, that's another thing. Organized religions, including the New Age movement, do this. Well, if you do this one thing over and over, then you'll get there. No, you'll have to do whatever it is and you'll have to tweak it in your own unique way to make it work. If you understand that you can take anything, tweak it in your own unique way and get it done, then you'll take my, um, my information and anyone and everyone else's information that you can find and you'll incorporate it, use what you can use, throw out what you can't, tweak it to your way and make it work. An example of this is I was talking to her about interacting with somebody and I said, just say text, I don't care. I just don't care. Let that energy just flow right on through you. Just let it. I don't care. I just don't care. Well, she said she has been saying that. She's been typing in I D C. I don't care. I D C. But I could, the second it came out of her mouth, this is the way she was doing it. 
I don't care. I don't care. Whereas when I said it, it was, I don't care. I don't care. She was going, I don't care. Can you see the difference between those? It's an energetic difference. So you have to get those words and those deeds that get you to the energetic place that you go to a timeline that is closer to 5D, that gets rid of the things that you don't want. You can't use, she couldn't use, I don't care. Why? Because I don't care to her was full of all of this anger and pushback and um, uh, negativity. She couldn't use I don't care, not in this circumstance. She couldn't use it like me. So we had to come up with a different sentence, a different way of dealing with it that would allow the energy to flow through her. Okay? So that is what you have to do individually. And I can't talk to everyone individually and one-on-one -on -one in every moment of every day to let you know I can do these videos and will continue to do so. But ultimately, you're going to have to take this information, and that's what I mean. You've got to be really, really aware of your own feelings and emotional response to things. You have to know what you're sending out vibrationally, what frequency you're on, what energy you're sending out to communicate which timeline you're going on, therefore what you're creating around you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. My break is over. Um, definitely after my trip, Stephanie has decided, I think I've told you this, guys, this already. She's decided to sell her farm and to move east. So we're in the process here of um, painting. We're going to sell the two houses separately. So we're getting one house ready. So we have to repaint and fix everything. You guys probably know all about that kind of stuff. So after all of this time of being out of society and, and out of the money world, it looks like I'm coming back in. Of course, I'm going to have to, to uh, sell my books and my paintings and all that stuff. But it looks like I'm going to have to... Uh, uh, she can't work on cars and make a living with cars if we're trying to get this house ready. So I'm back into, um, I think I'll go back to my painting and I can also make jewelry. Of course, I don't know, are you guys interested? I've made these ear things that can be used with hair that I've got about a hundred of them, I think. Uh, are you guys interested in looking at them and maybe buying them from me? Uh, let me know if so. I'll do a video and and show them to you and uh, set that up so I can start making some income here. I think I'm going to do a temporary website also, and I guess I'll go ahead and do sessions. I've had so many people ask me, and I think at this point I can do it without me being sick after every single conversation. And uh, so and that will be available to anybody as well. And um, I'm going to try to finish this book over the next couple weeks and I'll probably do a downloadable version that there'll be a, a um, that'll be available on that little, you know, temporary website because Jeannie's putting together, I mean, a serious one. It's like, you know, corporate big time people have one like a serious website. I'm not sure what all that means, but she starts talking and I'm just like, whoosh, right over my head. So I may do this little temporary one to uh, get some income coming in here to help, you know, it costs money to redo these, you know, fix things on a house. I want to help her. And uh, the sooner we get that done, the sooner I can get my trailer sold in my truck and then get out there and get done what I want to do. So uh, hopefully with y'all's support, I can get that done. I'm thinking also about once the book's done of making a hard copy before it's printed, you know, before I do the self-publishing thing. I'm thinking about perhaps printing it just like with a printer and putting a cover on it and then doing a painting to go on the front of it and then signing it and then selling that to individuals for more. So it's kind of like a painting and I'll do it for each person and then sign the book with, with uh, something to that individual person. Would you guys be interested in anything like that? Um, I think if it was me, I would. But anyway, y'all let me know and I'll put together this little website in a way that maybe <clears throat> I can bring in some money for to help survive. 
and I can give you guys what you want to. What do you think? Anyway, let me know, and hopefully this video will help people too. I would completely forgot. I should have done this kind of thing way, way earlier. Okay, guys, well, I got to go back to painting. So uh, I'm going to take a picture of the room so you can see them before and after. And uh, I think it's going to look pretty good. I think it's going to look pretty good. Then a lot of little stuff, you know, like fixing holes and handles and stuff. All right, well, that's it. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear about the house. So I uh, love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.